Shalom, shalom, precious people of God. We come to mention and question. I trust it is good wherever time it is. Good morning, good night, good afternoon. Whatever time it is, it's surely going to be good. I am Malcolm David and we are proclaiming the word of the Lord in the midnight hour. Here it's in the night watches and we bless the name of the Lord. Even for this time, we commence with a word of prayer. Precious Father, you who is infinite in grace, we thank you. We thank you for you are the Christ. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And we pray right now for salvation of many as we proclaim this word. Let it become flesh and let it cut through our spirit and soul, our bones and our marrow. And we pray that, Lord, you will strengthen us and refresh us to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we proclaim the gospel of Mark, and I'm so excited that the Lord has allowed us even to come at this hour, which is a midnight hour. It's Mission Monday, and we bless the name of the Lord being the eighth day of 2024 that we proclaim these scriptures, and we mention and pray <clears throat> that God will reveal himself, give us a spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation, and we'll get understanding as we proclaim this word. So I will proclaim it <clears throat> like Ezra did. So we are on Mark, Mark chapter 9, verse 38. Teacher, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say something bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. Hallelujah. We continue on proclaiming Mark chapter 9 verse 42. Causing to sin is the title of that passage. And if anyone, of, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large milestone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter maimed with two hands than with two hands and you go into hell where the fire never goes out. Mark 9.45 And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter, the, to enter life crippled than to have both feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Because it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. Where, does, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. Beloved, the description of hell mentioned here where the fire is not quenched and the worm does not die gives us a picture that hell is a real place. It's not just bad happenings. Hell is not just bad happenings. Hell is a real place that many that will not accept Christ as Lord will end up in that place called hell. We come to a very, very uh, powerful passage that has, you know, a lot of interpretations. People have made a lot of interpretations. But I just want us to read word for word and then we shall apply it based with what it says. Mark chapter 10, a very small passage about, uh, about 12 verses. Hear this. 
Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and cross and across the Jordan. Again crowds of people came to him, and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Verse 3. What did Moses command you? He replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard, said the Lord, that Jesus wrote this law. Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. That settles it for that passage about divorce. The little children and Jesus. Mark chapter 10 verse 13. People were bringing People were, were bringing little children to Jesus for him to, to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. Verse 17. As the, the rich man, the passage is the rich man. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees. I love this part where people fall on their knees. You know, we've been seeing this a lot in the Gospel of Mark. From the very, very first time that we see someone falling at the knees of Jesus around chapter 5 there and we have been seeing them falling at the knees of Jesus so let's listen to what happens to this rich man so as Jesus started on his way a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him good teacher he asked what must I do to inherit eternal life <coughs> why do you call me good Jesus answered no one is good except God alone you know the commandments do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all this I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Mark 10, 24. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Then the disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man is impossible. This is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible with God. So Peter said to him, we have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied. No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and for the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much as in the present age homes, brothers, sisters, 
mothers, children and fields, and with them persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Jesus again predicts his death. Mark chapter 10, 32. They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way and the disciples were astonished while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. Verse 33. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. The request of James and John. Matthew 10:35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want to do. We want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let no one, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in glory. Verse 38, you do not know what you are asking. Jesus said, Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this. They became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regard, those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom to many. Here lies a very key principle in the walk with Jesus, that we ought to co always consider others better than ourselves, and we always consider that we are out to go out to serve rather than to be served. Blind Bartimaeus receives sight. This is like the golden part of the Gospel of Mark. For me, that is. Mark 10, 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said to him, and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the way. The triumphal entry. Mark chapter 11. Before we continue, I just want to, you know, bring your attention at reading God's word and how it is so beautiful to read it in context. Whenever you read God's word in context, it becomes powerful, more powerful than when you're just reading a small passage or a small verse. It's a beauty for us to be able to proclaim the word of God. And the title of this video is definitely coming up in the other passages as we continue to read. So it says in verse 11, as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent 
two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one had ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Tell him, The Lord needs it, and it will, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied to a doorway. As they untied it, some people were standing there. They asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloths, when they brought their colt, the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut into the into the in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mark 11:10 Blessed is the is the coming kingdom of our father David Hosanna in the highest Just um, Jesus entered and went to the temple He looked around at everything but since it was already late he went out to Bethany with the 12 Mark 11:12 the next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say, On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it to a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, but they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Mark eleven twenty. The withered tree here is clearly coming up. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look! The fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt it in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins, all, all your sins. Beloved, it's very important for us to realize that forgiveness is a fundamental uh, value that we must carry whenever we pray. That forgiveness is very, very key. That we ought to forgive and thereby our Father in heaven will also forgive us. The authority of Jesus questioned. Hmm. Mark eleven twenty seven. They arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked. And who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Answer me and I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, Then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, they feared the people, for everyone held what that John was a prophet. They answered Jesus, We do not know, Jesus said, Neither will I tell you, 
by which authority I am doing these things. Mark chapter 12. He then began to speak in parables. A man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a pit for the winepress, and built a watchtower. He then rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey at harvest time. He sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit from the of the vineyard. But they seized him and bet him and sent him away empty-handed. Verse 4, Mark chapter 12. Then he sent another servant to them. They struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully. He sent still another, and that one they killed. He sent many others, some not they bet and others they killed. He had one left. He sent a son whom he loved. He sent him last of all, saying, They will respect my son. But the tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, the capstone. The Lord has done it and it is marvelous in our eyes. Then they looked for a way to arrest him because they knew he had spoken the parable against them. But they were afraid of the crowd, so they let, left him and went away. Mark chapter 12, verse 13, paying taxes to Caesar. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and asked him, Whose portrait, he asked them, whose portrait is at this, is in this? And whose inscription? Caesar, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. Mark twelve eighteen, Marriage at the Resurrection then the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the wife must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, and he also died leaving no child. It was the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left had any children. Last of all, a woman died too. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be? Since the seven were married to her, Jesus replied, Are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When the, die, when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the heavens, the angels in the heavens. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. The greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard him debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, the Shema. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu. 
Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's the most important one. Then verse 30, Mark 12, 30. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one. And there is no one other than but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. And now comes the title of this proclamation, Whose Son is the Christ? Beloved, I want to, before even I read this, I want to mention to you that Jesus is not a Christian. I'll repeat this. Jesus is not a Christian. Jesus is the Christ. So whose Son is the Christ? Mark 12 and verse 35. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, How is it that the teachers of the law say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put my, your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and greeted in the marketplaces and the most important seats of the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and, from a, from, and, and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished more severely. Mm -hmm. So whose son is the Christ? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He is the Son of the Living God. He is God, the Son. The Trinity contains, or the Trinity is one. The Trinity is not a separation or a joint union. The Trinity is the attribute of God that gives us the true nature of God that makes him holy, holy, holy. Is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mark 12, 41, the widow's offering. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in very two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling the disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. The poor widow has put in more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out their wealth. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything. All she had to live on. Beloved of God, this question of who is the son, whose son is the Christ, is a very important question in the time we live. Whose son is the Christ? That who do you say that, that Jesus is? Many of us maybe are turned to become Christian because of his religion, but still you do not have the knowledge of whose son is the Christ. I come to introduce this to you very, very importantly, that you could be, have been born in a Christian family, you could have grew, grown up with all the uh, patterns of being a Christian. But I want to mention to you that if you follow Christ as a Christian in terms of a religion you are following, you will miss out on knowing whose son is the Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever 
believes in him that it is not salvation is not only for christians salvation is not only for the people that are christian or that speak a language of 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 christian christianity for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever whosoever even somebody in hamas somebody in the osama bin laden's team if they believe if they believe if they confess with their mouth jesus is lord and believe in their heart god raised him from the dead they should be saved because he is the christ jesus is the christ jesus is not a christian he is the christ yesu siom christo yesu ni christo is very important that we understand this thing whose son is the christ whose son is the christ it is david who being led by the holy spirit declared the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand until i put your enemies under your feet david himself calls him lord how then can he be his son so it's delightful to understand that the son of Christ, the, that 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 that, uh, that jesus christ is a son of the father and is fully god the holy spirit is god the holy spirit and he's fully god you know many times especially here in africa we kind of consider by what we do and the actions we see that the holy spirit maybe is lesser is like a power you know you live in here singing in church welcome holy spirit come, come it's like he comes from somewhere the precious holy spirit is god the holy spirit whose son is the christ he is the son of the living god he is god the son this gospel must be preached this gospel must be preached the way it is without trying to sugarcoat it without trying to apply some chocolate on it no just the way it is that the gospel of the kingdom must be preached and then the end will come it has to be proclaimed it has to be mentioned it has to be spoken it has to break protocols and things that people expect them to do you know as the lord has enabled us to be able to share this on platforms where it is very rare to get the word of god in fact when you try to bring the word of god on social media the people will tell you no 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 just do it small do do it small no 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 johnny to do it small you have you have the time you have the the capacity share the word of god preach the gospel do not apologize for the gospel preach the gospel let the world let the nations hear because this is it a story is given about this man who was driving next to a forest and then right in the middle of the road the holy spirit prompts him and he says stop here go to the edge of the forest and preach the gospel so the man did not understand why he was doing that but he first went to the edge of the forest and he began to preach here are all trees you know he did not imagine there would be anybody there and he made a, a, a very good sermon and eventually he made an altar call and prayed as if somebody was praying with him then after that he left so many many down the many many years down the line uh, he went back to his country he was a someone not within the the country but there was a conference back uh, in the country where he was and there are some pastors that had come from africa so when he went up there on the podium he gave the story and um during break there's this man who came straight at him like he knew him and he had tears in his eyes and he said to him that night that you preach is the night that i gave my life to jesus i had gone to the forest to go and commit suicide i was tired i was depressed and i was sure that unless god sends me an angel i would die but then the lord sent me an angel 
that today, after so many years, I've come to know that you were that angel. The man was so joyful to see how an action of obedience led to such a great move of God. So it's the same thing that I've mentioned. Hallelujah. Isaiah 9, 6. Mighty King, Everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Whose son is the Christ? Mighty King, Everlasting Father. This is it. That we must let the nations know. Let me tell you, beloved, that, you know, social, social change is good. Humanitarian work is good. Uh, compassion is good. Being able to feed the hungry is good. Take care of the orphans and the widows. That's the true religion. It's also very good. But we cannot replace it with preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage somebody watching me. I encourage you, you shall listen to me now or beyond. That it's time to preach the gospel, the undiluted word of the living God. We must preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he? The King of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. The same question asking, who is the King of glory? Who is the Son of of is whose son is the Christ? The same question, same, same answer. Everlasting, mighty king, everlasting father. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. Hallelujah. We command the heads to be lifted. Command the gates. We command the gates. We command the time. We command this new week. We proclaim new beginnings in the mighty name of Jesus. In as, 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 the, as the pattern of the new calendar, we pray over 2024, the Lord God, who is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, whose son is the Christ. The Lord God Almighty. The same answer. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up everlasting doors. Come into Korogosho. Come into Dandora. Come into Eastland, Lord. You are the King of glory. We welcome you into Eastlands. We welcome you into Kariobangi. Into Kariobangi North, Kariobangi South. We welcome you into Calcutta. We welcome you into New, New Delhi. We welcome you, Lord God. In uh, in uh, in Dakota, South Dakota, we welcome you, Lord. Uh, even in in uh, Washington, Tacoma, we welcome you, Lord. In Seattle, who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Be lifted, everlasting doors, that the King of Glory may come. In. Who, Son, is the Christ? Mighty King, Everlasting Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Beloved, I have to end it here. And I just want to encourage you. It's good to see you, my sister Vivian, in the night seasons. Shalom, shalom. Keep, keep uh, broadcasting the manner. Uh, move it from five minutes to as many more as God gives you. You have capacity. Share the word of God. Share the word of God. Preach the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is mighty. Hallelujah. God is mighty. He is the king of glory. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift it up, everlasting doors, and the king of glory may come in. We bless the name of the Lord for allowing us into this uh, night seasons. And um, we really want to thank God. As, as I mentioned, I will be able to do a live video when I can. So we are doing one every day on Instagram, doing one here on Facebook, and uploading lots of content on the YouTube channel, Malcolm David. And all this thing is for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. So we encourage you not to fear to preach the gospel. Sometimes we, you know, in error, we have said things like, we need money to preach the gospel. Today I hear come to say, we don't need money 
to preach the gospel. We need Jesus. All we need to do, we don't need to fight. No, no, no. We need to invite the King of Glory. He is the King of Glory. And every time we invite Him, He comes with all the necessary resources. Hallelujah. He comes with all the grace. He comes with all the blessings, all the goodness, all the answers to prayer, all the healings, and all the devils must be cast out. Yes, in the comments, let me read here. It says, in genealogy, Matthew 1.16, whom born Jesus is called the Christ. So let me just read that genealogy. Hallelujah. is a good thing. Shortly, actually, uh, we, are, we are left with very few chapters of Mark. I think we are left with only four chapters of Mark. And we shall be done with the Gospel of Mark. In today's eight days, so probably we shall be able to finish. In under ten days, we'll be done with the Gospel of Mark. So the genealogy... Of Jesus 1 verse 16 it says um, and Jacob the father of Joseph the husband of Mary of whom was born Jesus who is called the Christ so he's the son of God because he did not man did not participate in the con in the in the giving birth of our Lord Jesus Christ he is a son of woman. But when you look at the genealogy, we notice that the genealogy, the genealogy goes all the way to Joseph. Yet Joseph did not participate. So how did it work? It worked because he is the seed of David. The Lord preserved it. The Lord definitely supernaturally was able to set aside the seed of David so that he would be son of David. You understand? That this genealogy comes all the way to Joseph, husband of Mary, yet he did not participate in the conception of Jesus. It's profound. And what I love about the word of God is that I don't need to know everything. I don't need to understand many things. I just need to know Jesus. And many of the times, I just I'll mention this to you, my friends, is that you don't need to fight devils. You don't need to kick devils. You don't need to fast for 150 days. You don't have to do so many things. All you just need to do is invite Jesus. And the devils will flee. We invite Jesus, we preach the right gospel. We invite Jesus and we will see. How, I mean, I saw a sorry st a state of affairs in the news um, recently where a whole church somewhere has closed down because they don't want to be part of a certain parish. They don't want to be part of that parish. They want to be part of another parish. And because of this, they were real fighting. I, like I saw an old man punch a young man. And the young man is well-mannered. He did not punch that old man. Because if he punched that old man, the old man would have broken a bone or would have gone down. But the old man was so angry, said, what? He kicked somebody in church. So how can we be able to, uh, to, to, this, to, to cut off these things if we do not invite Christ? We ought to preach the gospel preach the gospel there are so many other things but the moment you notice we are not preaching about jesus christ and him crucified and all these things and the nature we must surround the story around jesus everything we do everything any kind of study that we try to do about jesus christ about the gospel we must preach the gospel because if we don't preach the gospel then we'll be trying to do something different which was not in the fundamental for god so loved the world for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son is the most is like the power of hydrogen in chemistry what we call ph it is like the the one that governs the whole scripture for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son this is the fundamental space even if we go, we want to know our potential, we want to know our purpose, we want to do this, we want to do that, and unless and until we preach the gospel, 100%, that if you are going to sit with a professional and the professional leaves being a professional and not being a son of God, there is a problem. If we bring 
professionals to church and we don't preach to them the gospel there is a problem we don't we are afraid to tell them whose son is the christ because once we are able to preach the gospel evangelize every single person that we meet every single man woman that you meet even when you go to the hospital with with you know with a case or with with you're going to take uh, temperature or or uh, or weight of your child you know you're a new mother you ought to remember that this doctor may have only you and this opportunity to hear the gospel so as you turn yourself to be intentional in sharing the gospel and I'm not talking about being religious and super spiritual. I'm talking about applying whose son is the Christ. Because he, this is the gospel. This is the, the gospel must be preached. <laughs> I remember one place I went. And uh, in the night seasons, we shared the gospel. I reached a place I was so, so tired. I asked for a mat. And uh, as I was lying on the mat, you know, I was, I was just, you know, I was so, so tired. My God, that day I was tired, tired, tired. I'd left the city very early in the morning. I had not slept. I was in a prayer meeting all night asking God about the route, what is going to happen today, the tomorrow. And I really like it like that because, you know, sometimes when you know everything, like when I'm going for my own errands, I know what time I'll go, I'll do this, I'll come back, I know this. But sometimes when we are doing things for God, it's good to be, to be on a co-mission. As in, the great commission is not just the great commission, it is the great co-mission. Hallelujah. I will be back definitely. But I feel the joy and the and the fire of God, you know, just blowing inside me as I share this word. That in that season when I was so tired and I was lying down on that mat, you know, I actually slept. It was down in Samburu. And I was sleeping outside a place where uh, it was very dark, number one. Number two, only stars were up there. And then, uh, because people wanted to listen to me, there are three elders that came and sat next to me there with their seats. And it was a very starry night. And then they were, where I was sleeping, the manyata was just behind me. So there's a, a dried piece of cement that was right in front of the, of, the, of the manyata that they were using as a seat. And this is where I'd drawn my, I'd drawn my mat and I was sleeping on that rock. And then one old man asked me a question, where I come from? Where do you come from? And who is your father? Where is your family? Tell us, where have you come from? So they are discussing themselves. They are speaking a language I don't understand. Because for me, I only know what the Bible says in their language. So I only read Bible to them and get to translate it. And that's how we communicate. So these guys are asking me, the old, elderly men, elderly men asking me where do you come from who is your family eh. so the answer i gave them was that jesus one time was with his disciples and then someone came and told him jesus your mother and brothers are outside they want to see you then what jesus replied to them is what i want to reply to you i told them those was this i told them this is what I will say exactly what he said. That my brother, my mother, my sisters are those that do the will of God. So I said in the same manner as of asking me where I come from, it is completely not necessary. All we have come to do is because of the love of Jesus. I've come here because of the love of Jesus. I don't have any relative here. I don't have any interest among you. I do not come here so that you, you did not sponsor my coming. I was not sent so that I go and spare the land, spy, uh, spy the land. I was not sh sh sent by my denomination. I have come because of the love of Jesus. And as I said that, there was a silence so thick. And you could hear the crickets in the, in the night. And all the night sounds. 
I could hear a distant hyena laughing in the background. You could hear a donkey somewhere in the night. Very night, dark, dark. Then I heard them speak to one another in Samburu. Then one of them said, You truly must be from God. For what you have, the way you have devoted yourself, you must be from God. That is how God just turned that whole scenario. He moved it away from the interest of where do you come from. The same, same question they were asking Jesus. Whose son is the Christ? The people were very, very interested in knowing whose son is the Christ. So when you pray, when you fast, we should not do like the pagans do, who want everybody to see their fasting. For us, we have social media which we have to communicate to people. But, now when you get to the work of fasting, it should not be obvious to people that you are fasting. Cut the visiting. Unatembelea eh? watu na unafast. Sasa unawasumbua tu. If you are fasting, don't visit people who are having meals. Because you will be forced to be in a very awkward situation of trying to explain why you are not eating. So it's important that a time of fasting is a time of consecration as well. You see. <laughs> what I like about uh, apostolic teachings and being able to share the word of God as God gives us capacity is that the Holy Spirit will just drop something into your spirit as you're speaking. Roa buwana ataeka tu neno ndani ya moyo wako wakati unaongea. Na hilo jambo linakuwa ni jambo ambalo mtu mwingine alikuwa na akona struggle nalo. That somebody else will be struggling about something. What will I do at the office now that I am fasting? What will I do when they bring the, the meal card and I have to, to say I'm not having the meal? You don't have to explain yourself. You just have wisdom. Replace the time of food with reading the Bible and prayer. That is the best way to fast. Just the same time. Don't go hungry. <laughs> Eat food. <laughs> if you are hungry, kula. Kula kabisa. Eh? God is not waiting for you to stop eating so that he can bless you. I want to mention to you that fasting, true fasting, is an attitude of the heart. And I will talk about that again, uh, maybe in the next broadcast, because it's a very broad topic. But let me mention to you, if you have purpose to start your fast, do it fast. And you don't have to run fast and let everybody know what you are doing. In fact, the Bible says, anoint your face with oil. Anoint your face so that you don't look like you're fasting. Anoint yourself. Look different. Be, you know, replace the time of food with preaching the gospel. Replace the time of food with reading the word of God. Replace the time of eating food with prayer. And the spare lunch money that you get from not eating, make sure you sow a seed probably to some widows or some orphans, or as the Holy Spirit directs you. It's very important for that we may be able to obey and fully and clearly answer the question, whose son is the Christ? Hallelujah. Beloved, we have to end this broadcast. And as we end it, we thank God for those of you tuned. Um, just keep your notifications on. I may not tell you I come at this time or I come at this time. As the Lord gives me capacity, I will just be able to. At this time, we are not able to tell you 9 p.m., 9 o'clock, this, this. No, no. Let the Holy Spirit help me because there are some days which are not like other days. But what I can assure you is that there will be a daily video as long as the Lord helps us. But when we go out where there is no network, there will be no recordings. But as long as we have recordings, as long as we have capacity, we shall be able to share the undiluted, undiluted word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, we bless the Lord, uh, Sister Vivian. God bless you so much. So just keep your notifications on. When I come up live, it will notify you. If I come up during the day, you have time, watch it. If I come up when in a time when you are not available, it will tell you, Malcolm David was alive at this time. But this is a live moment for us to be able to share 
the word of God. Shortly we will be done with the book of Mark completely. And then we shall go on to another one. I can't wait for us to start season 8 of 150 days of Psalms. That means we will take a post, we will take a whole period of daily diving into the word of God and connecting and just pure and diluted. <laughs> we don't want to dilute it. Hermeneutics, sijui nini, iyo vitu ni mzuri. That is for the teacher. But for the students, they do not need to know about syllabus. Them, they need the knowledge. They need the message. They do not need to know about the manuals the teacher was reading. Then the what and the what. Those ones are nice. But for us, we want to see fruit coming out of the word of God. We want to see everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, you see God just using the word in you to release life to others. This is the joy that when you saturate yourself with the word of God, even the miracles and signs and wonders, follow them that believe. Hallelujah. It's Mission Monday tonight and I'm so excited that in a couple of hours I will go as he follows, as he leads me and I will share with you where it was that I was. In February we'll be going back to Samburu by the grace and mercy of God and I thank God. Clearly, by the mercies of God, we know and we have understand, we have understood that it is not about humanitarianism. It is not about social change. It is not charity. It is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel, the undiluted gospel that he died for the sins of mankind and he rose up again and when he came up out of glory he went up and he came down for 40 days he was down here on earth and he still seated with Christ with God in the right hand side making intercession and soon and very soon he's coming back so when he comes will he find faith in the earth may he find you and me full of faith May he find us full of faith. May he find us reaching out and bringing the gospel, bringing other gospel, bringing the gospel, bringing the gospel. And not just having materialistic approach of the things we want from him. Don't look at what is in the hand of God. Look and gather what's in his heart. Go into his heart. <laughs> ah, man. This is sweet. Shalom. Let us pray before we finish. Precious Father, we pray for this program. We pray especially for the word of God that has gone out in power. We pray that, Father, any demonic activity that may be pursuing us in this season, hey, we just invite you. Lord, come. King of glory, come. King of glory, come. That the gates be lifted. It says that lift up your heads, all ye gates. Be lifted up everlasting doors. That the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? He is the Christ. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that the gates be lifted at this time. And let your name be glorified. Let many come to the fullness of Christ today. Lord, as you send me into this location that I will be going today and the testimonies that will come following because of these answers to prayer that you always give. Thank you for provision that, Lord, we, are not, we have not lacked electricity, we have not lacked internet, and we have not lacked anything concerning godliness and even being able to share the gospel. We pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ will advance in this season like never before. We command new beginnings in the mighty name of Jesus. We command favor, new doors that are lifting, gates that are lifting, that the king of glory may come in. The people that were mockers, the people that were sitting scornfully against the Lord are the same ones like you did it for Saul. The Lord, you're going to turn them around just like you did Saul and they will become like Paul. Father God, I pray, let there be a revelation like this one. Let there be a revolution of your goodness. My Father, thank you, Lord, for this 
platforms that you have given unto us. Help us and quicken the Christians on social media to use their platforms to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ even to the nations of the earth. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. More grace to you and shalom. I invite you also to send a love gift, send an offering, send a tithe. It is all well to the glory of God. And as the scripture says, we shall be blessed as we obey the Lord. So shalom. I will see you in the next video. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, whatever time applies for you. It will be good. Shalom.